Hi, this is Stephen from Own or Disown. In today's video, I am comparing the GTX 1650 in the Gigabyte Aorus 5 against the GTX 1650 Max-Q in the Lenovo C940. Now, both have 1024 shaders, but the 1650 Max-Q is a 35-watt part versus 50-watt for the 1650, and as a result, has a higher boost clock. Both laptops have the i7-9750H CPU and 16 gigabytes of RAM running in dual channel. And all games were tested at 1080p. Here is Battlefield 5 using ultra settings on the Rotterdam map. The 1650 Max-Q is on top and the 1650 at the bottom. There doesn't seem to be too much between them at this quality setting. The 1650 boosts up higher, of course, and gives it a slight advantage. As we lower settings, the difference widens possibly because the OS 5 CPU uses more watts. So I then set the OS 5 to its lowest power setting of 38 watts, and here is Metro Exodus using DX12 high settings. I use the start of the campaign rather than the inbuilt benchmark, as it is more representative of what you will expect in-game. Even with the OS 5 CPU at 38 watts, the GTX 1650 commands a healthy lead of the 1650 Max-Q, boosting about 200 megahertz higher. So at high settings, the 1650 was 32% faster and 38% faster at low settings. That's quite a sizable difference. Here is Doom Eternal using high settings. The 1650 Max-Q does pretty well here, and it's more than capable of exceeding 60 FPS. There isn't too much between the two cards. And indeed, at ultra settings, the 1650 was only 10% faster and the minimums only 5%. Now, lower in quality settings sees a larger increase, which may reflect more on the CPU boost clock. Now for Overwatch using Epic settings. It is interesting to see that despite the 1650 boosting up about 15% higher than the Max-Q, the difference in frame rate isn't that big. Either GPU is fine in this game. Let's see what happens at lower quality settings. At Epic, we see a 4% difference and at low, only about 8%. So the GPU boost clock doesn't impact this game as much as the others. Using the Far Cry 5 inbuilt benchmark, the regular 1650 commands a 12% advantage at ultra settings and a 17% increase at low settings. Minimum frame rates follow a similar trend. Now for Call of Duty Warzone, I use the following settings. It's a mixture of normal and high. The OS 5 and GTX 1650 definitely is faster in this game. The 9750H in the C940 runs at a lower clock rate than the CPU in the OS 5 even with that pegged at 38 watts, so that may well contribute to this. And for Apex Legends, I use the following settings, which is a mixture of low to medium settings. The CPU in the C940 runs at about 22 watts, so again, it does see a low boost clock, and as a result, we may be seeing a higher difference than what we would normally may have been. Looking at the chart, the GTX 1650 sees an advantage of 25 to 29% here, so I'd use this as reference only. But even with the lower CPU clock and the 1650 Max-Q, it was still very playable and I saw no dips in performance. So when I average out all of the results, I focus on the high to ultra settings to rule out any CPU influence and don't include Call of Duty or Apex Legends for this very same reason. But if you do have a 1650 Max-Q and a lower power CPU, at least these results do show you what you might expect. The GTX 1650 is 14% faster than its lower powered Max-Q counterpart, which tallies with the difference in the boost clock. We do have a larger difference in minimum frame rates though, which may reflect more on the gaming experience as a whole. Now I do have the OS 5 video coming up shortly, so make sure to subscribe for that. I'd like to thank you for watching. Bye now.